I cannot believe I'm finally here back again in front of the entrance of Universal Studios. It's been six and a half years ago and here I finally am again ready for a new series of vlogs full of amazing parks. I hope you are ready for some great things ahead because this is going to be amazing. In 2017 I visited Orlando for the last time and since then a lot has changed. Every park in the steam park capital has invested in new rides and experiences and after six and a half years I'm back to explore them all. Today that trip is starting in a world-class theme park. Welcome to Universal Studios Florida. We just entered the park. It feels so unreal to be back here actually. Being back here really feels, yeah, really not only brings uh, great memories back, but also uh, makes the inner hype even more real as I'm about to experience some world-class rides again. Now Universal Studios opened up in 1990 and was back then the only Universal Park in Florida until the opening of Islands of Adventure right next door in 1999. Anyway, yeah, that's for another video. This park, based around all kinds of Universal movies and TV shows, houses some world-class dark rides, some cool roller coasters, but also some uh, rides which could be better, but more on that later. Now getting to this park is amazingly easy, as of course Orlando is all centered around uh, theme parks and the US Universal is one of the biggest players here in the, in the world or Orlando. The whole yeah, highway system makes this park extremely accessible from all over Orlando. Now the parks here also have a lot of parking lots available so after a little walk from the parking lot uh, through city walk you're almost instantly ready to start your day here at universal studios or island of adventure now entrance to these parks is not cheap but that's very normal as these are probably one of the most visited theme parks in the world right now so for a one park day uh, ticket to universal studios you'll pay around 119 dollars minimum which is around 113 euros but that's the lowest price, of course, as the price is very according to the crowds expected, actually. So please make sure to check out the websites for more info about uh, tickets, prices and packages and such. Now, as I could spend a whole other video just on that topic, I'm not going to do that. I'm here to have some fun. So uh, now, as you can see, we are at Production Central, which is all about movie production. But throughout the years, that team yeah, has been moved more and more to the background with rides being added, such as the brand new villain con here on this side and uh, of course a minion mayhem there and rip right rockets and such so this area is a bit of a team mess but anyway the park also houses some other themed areas such as new york uh, which is the second one home to transformers revenge of the mummy or race through new york with jimmy fallon and next to that we also have san francisco uh, home to fast and the furious supercharged so world expo with Man in black alien attack uh, Springfield, which is all about Simpsons, Hollywood, with at this moment no real rides, but also the DreamWorks area, which is being constructed right now, uh, where the Woody Woodpecker Kid Zone used to be until last year. But the biggest reason to come here uh, at this moment is one of the most immersive themed areas in the world, which is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley, which houses some amazing rides like uh, Escape from Gringotts, the infamous Hogwarts Express bringing you to the Wizarding World area at the neighboring Island of Adventure and back. And even though that's just a train ride, it's still yeah, a concept that blows my mind actually, as you can actually really make a true train ride with the Hogwarts Express, including matching happening outside. So it's amazing what Universal did. But anyway, let's uh, get to our first ride and talk more about it afterwards. VillainCon is the newest addition to Universal Studios Florida and is a shooting dark ride. Although you cannot really call it a ride as the ride system is literally a conveyor belt on which you're standing while it takes you through the different scenes. But as said, it's a shooting dark ride so at some point you receive a gun and get to shoot on things in different scenes but please don't ask me what this has to do with the VillainCon.
Okay, so what did I think of Villain Con here behind me? Well, it's a funny ride system, but a bit, yeah, it looks a bit cheap actually. Now, the outside queue really looks pretty cheap and not really immersive at all until you're inside, and from then on, it, it's a bit better. But now, the ride itself, the, the shooting is fun, and then the ride system is pretty funny, but kind of weird also. But anyway, uh, it's nice steaming during the ride, uh, but very based on screens actually. Now, and to keep ourselves in the Despicable Me team, let's get to the other side here for another Minion experience in Minion Mayhem, a simulator style ride which opened up here in 2012. But there used to be 3D glasses on this ride, from, but from what I heard, that is not the case anymore since 2019. And they even changed the whole pre show to remove all the references to the 3D glasses, actually. But anyway, let's check it out. Okay, so that was Minion Mayhem. It's still an enjoyable uh, simulator style ride with a lot of humor and energy, but the only thing that bothered me is the fact that you're not really immersed in, in, in it actually, especially when you're seated in a, a ride vehicle at the back of the theater because you're too far from the screen actually, and then you see all the other ride vehicles in front of you also. So in that opinion, it's not the best, but as said, it's still very enjoyable, of course. So we've done some fun rides here to warm up. Now let's get ourselves some real thrill as we're about to uh, do this one here, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. And honestly, it's yeah the weirdest thing that they built in the park uh, as all the rides here are all very heavily themed and amazing experiences while this Mauer Coaster is really like the most boring, unthemed ride Disney uh, Universal sorry, has ever built. So uh, to this day, I still don't get what happened here when they came up with this ride idea, but anyway, the ride itself, in my opinion, it's an enjoyable ride. It's a custom design with some fun moments like the first drop and the non-importing loop. Similar to, for example, the one at uh, Flying Aces in, in Ferrari World Abu Dhabi. But maybe from what I can remember, a bit too much breaks during the ride, but still enjoyable. Also with the onboard music and such, which you can choose yourself, but it's been so many years actually, so maybe my opinion about this ride might have changed, so let's try it out and yeah, check it out after all those years. So this was such a cool coaster actually again, it's, it's still pretty smooth actually and the, and the music is really loud actually with some good bass making it very immersive uh, as, as you're really, as it feels like you're really in a music video or something like that, it's really awesome. Now just the fact that it has a lot of breaks sections still kind of bothers me here but yeah anyway it's still an enjoyable roller coaster actually. Okay, so first milestone on this trip, coaster numero uno is done. Let's get to the next ride here in this next themed area, which is New York. And here on the left, we have a race through New York with a Jimmy Fallon. Now, during my first visit to Orlando in 2013, there used to be a special effects show here in this building. 
uh, themes all around uh, the Twister movie. It, it was, yeah, it was an enjoyable little show with some cool effects, but a little outdated, so not really missing that show to, m that much, to be honest. Because there are much uh, better uh, experiences uh, in this park here. But from what I can remember during my last visit in 2017, when this simulator ride here was brand new, a uh, race to New York with Jimmy Fallon is nothing too spectacular, actually. So let's see what uh, we have in store here. Okay, seriously, why is this ride even in this park? It's such a shitty ride. Uh, it's just a pretty calm simulator ride that's, that's not, yeah, not worth a rewrite, actually. I really don't get why they went for this theme or random story that doesn't make any sense. It's just such a strange thing. But anyway, it's already very visible. This park has a lot of screen-based rides here, actually. But luckily, the next ride is an amazing exception on that trend. This is the Revenge of the Mummy here on the left. Uh, which is a premier rides indoor coaster from 2004 themed around the mummy movie franchise There are different uh, versions of this ride in other universal parks But after I also did the one in Hollywood for example, I can safely say this was the more superior version uh, in the US parks here But let me tell you more about that ride uh, after we rode it Revenge of the Mummy is a roller coaster which features a cool dark ride portion in the beginning of the ride uh, together with a backwards section and some switch tracks to build up to the big finale featuring a launch and a lot of twists and turns in the dark. Although the ride does not feature inversions, I always remember this one as a really fun and thrilling ride actually. And for the nostalgia lovers out there, yes, this ride is situated in the warehouse where the old confrontation ride used to be. Although I never wrote this one, it's such a shame that one is gone. I was kind of disappointed actually by this ride. Uh, I remember the ride being more thrilling, more fun actually, but maybe I've been, been on too many great other ones uh, so far. Uh, it's not bad of course, but I remember it being a lot more interesting and intense actually. And from a fun but a rather disappointing coaster, let's get to an amazing dark ride here in the park. Transformers the ride 3D. It's a completely similar ride uh, system as the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man right next door. But anyway, this is like the, the more recent version, but uh, just with a lot more screens, actually. But let's check it out.
right, so this ride is, is fun, but it's, yeah, it's just too many screens, actually. The, the mix between the screens and the practical effects is not really that well balanced. That could be better. But anyway, it's, it's not a bad ride. So, Transformers done, and from one car-related ride to another. Although this one is on a whole other level and definitely not as interesting as Transformers, actually. Now, what we're about to experience now is a ride that, in my opinion, should not be a ride, actually. Fast and the Furious Supercharge is a ride based around the popular movie franchise Fast and the Furious, obviously, and is a screen-based simulator kind of ride. I mean, Universal Hollywood, this ride is just a part of the studio tour you can do there. For some reason here they, here they decided to make it a full standalone ride, which in my opinion is a bit ridiculous. But anyway, let's tell you more about this one once we've come off the ride. Okay, what do I need to say about uh, this actually? Now the beginning is kind of nice with the practical sets and the hologram effect in the second scene. But the finale is really not worth uh, the ride actually. It's just a big wraparound screen with a motion base and it's just not worth waiting too long. But the line was not too long so I guess I'm not the only one with that opinion. But anyway, not the best ride. Okay, and from what in my opinion is the worst ride here at Universal Studios, we're off to the most immersive area of the park as we're entering London here. But of course, for those who already know something about this park, this area here is not just London. And no, this is the gateway to pure theme park magic because behind these facades here is the, yeah, probably the most beautiful area in the park. Let's get to the wizarding world of Harry Potter Diagon Alley. We magically actually entered uh, Diagon Alley here uh, with a lot of things to explore here. At the back you see uh, the centerpiece which is uh, the Green Gods Bank with an amazing dragon on top as you can see which also breeds flames uh, every 10 minutes. Now Green Gods is the bank from the Harry Potter movies where all the movies uh, where all the wizards actually store their money but there is also a ride inside that building but let me get back on that uh, in a minute. On our left and right here we have some shops, as you can see, some real ones, some fake ones, some fake facades. But anyway, it looks really amazing. Now, on your left here, as you enter, you have the, there the Leaky Cauldron, which is the restaurant which also appears in the movies as gateway to Diagon Alley. But there is a lot more on our left here, actually. As you also have this uh, back alley here called Nocturne Alley, which is 
Uh, if you have seen the movies, the alley where all the shady wizards hang out. But the biggest reason to come here to this area for sure is this right here, which is the Escape from Gringotts. Now this is an intimate multi-dimension coaster from 2014 and was quite unique back then. Nowadays they have opened similar rides around the world like uh, Uncharted at Ventura or Mission Ferrari in Abu Dhabi, although that last one uh, is uh, not from Intamin. But anyway, this ride here is not a ride you do if you're looking for thrill. It's, it's for sure an experience coaster actually, so the coaster part might leave you underwhelmed, but anyway, the complete package of this ride is really top notch. And it looks pretty amazing already from the outside. Now I've already done the ride, but looking forward to ride it again after all those years, so let's do it. Okay, Escape from Gringotts is still an amazing ride. Now the only downside is the outside queue, which really takes you out of the immersion actually, because the indoor queue and, and the ride itself are really top notch. Now the ride itself is a lot of fun and, and the flow of the whole ride is perfect with very good transitions between scenes and such. So still loving this one, thanks to the beautiful theming, the fun ride layout, storytelling and effects, but it's more a dark ride than a roller coaster in my opinion. Now and after that amazing experience let's explore some more of Diagon Alley here as we have also another back alley here. Not as dark as Nocturne Alley as you can see but it's nice uh, to have this covered uh, area here with all the kinds of other experiences like uh, there's for example uh, there is a, a small stage show stage. But a bit further you also have some wand shops where you can buy wands uh, just as in the movies. 
So as you can see, it's a very immersive area here. The most immersive one in this park and for sure also one of the most immersive ones in the world, maybe. I mean, this is just amazing. With that, I would say we leave the wizarding world and get back to the real world, although that's also not really the case, of course. But anyway, we've still got two dark rides and one simulator left. Next dark ride we have here is at the back of the park, kind of separated from all the other rides. And that is Man in Black Alien Attack. As you can see, it's an interactive shooting dark ride. I remember this was a fun one, but anyway, it's just yeah, shooting dark rides, so let's score some points again. So my opinion on Man in Black Alien Attack here behind me, uh, I already forgot actually most of the rides since uh, running it back in 2017, but it's not bad. Uh, it's not world class either, but I've done shooter rides which are a lot worse actually. Now the queue line here is not really worth mentioning as it's pretty sober actually, but the teaming throughout the ride is actually nicely done. It's, it's 
just a bit unclear what the story is and where you have to shoot at. Now the, the riot vehicles also start to randomly spin around intensely during the ride at some point, which is a bit random, but anyway, it's, it's enjoyable. Then now let's get ourselves Simpsonified here by entering the amazing Springfield area, home to the Simpsons right on our left here. There's also Moe's Bar and of course the Quickie Mart from the TV series. But let's uh, see what we have here. Now this area used to be all about uh, Back to the Future and it, I still feel sad knowing I will never get to experience that right here be based on, on such an amazing movie franchise. But anyway, the Simpsons right here is also a lot of fun for sure. It used the same kind of simulator style ride system Back to the Future used to be. But so anyway, it's still very comparable, but let's check it out again. So the Simpsons ride, I'm still enjoying this ride, uh, it's, it's just a really great uh, system, uh, ride system with a very energetic movie with a lot of funny moments and such. And, and the huge dome screen you're in really makes it yeah, such a cool experience actually. But the only downside in my opinion is the quality of the screen. It doesn't seem to be very bright and a bit blurry maybe, but yeah, that's just a little downside because the rest of the ride is just really amazing. And from a simulator ride, so we're off to outer space as we're about to embark on a real classic Universal Studios gem. Now, E.T. Adventure here, uh, which we see somewhere there, it is, is a dark ride with a very unique ride system from Intamin, actually. And, and this ride is really like a golden oldie because it's already 34 years old. And uh, unfortunately, I can see Universal removing this oldie at some point in the near future. But yeah, for now, it's still here. So let's check it out.
So ET Adventure, the golden oldie here at uh, Universal and probably also the oldest ride still around here. Well, I hope to be honest, the ride uh, will stay here for a little longer as it's still such a unique ride system. But the scenes might be, yeah, might need uh, some updates maybe, but yeah, glad to see, still see it at least one ride in this park that is a real classic dark ride actually, without interactivity like shooting and such, without screens and such, as that is something, yeah, that's yeah, really missing in this park actually. So we've done all the rides here in Universal Studios. Now it's a park with a lot of world-class rides, but this park is just the start, of course, of our amazing trip here to Orlando. And with a total of 11 parks planned, this is going to be a trip of a lifetime for sure. Now, I have to correct myself actually, because we haven't actually done all the rides here in this park. No, we forgot to show you one thing, and that is this one here, the Hogwarts Express taking you all the way from King's Cross Station at Universal Studios to Island of Adventure and back. Now this ride is only accessible if you have a two-park ticket as you are literally going yeah, to another park with this train and that idea still blows my mind actually. It's such a simple idea but it's so brilliant as it really gives people an incentive to buy those two-park tickets because yeah, who doesn't want to ride the Hogwarts Express? It's just genius actually, but, but anyway, we're going to have some more fun at Island of Adventure, but that park is for another video, so see ya! Mm -hmm.